Hi everyone, today is Monday the 23rd of March. In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about the current situation with the virus and how, this, how things have changed for me and us over the last few days since my last video. I also want to talk a little bit about the government's new policies and stance on the current situation. I just want to talk a little bit about how I'm feeling. The reason is because, oh, and at the end of the video I want to talk a little bit more about positivity and things like that. Because I definitely don't want these videos to be uh, like contributing to negativity or anything like that. Um, my aim in talking about the things that, that are scary, that are unknown, um, that are confusing and whatever is only to connect with people because it's one thing to like over immerse yourself in negativity or whatever but I think that there is for me I think there is some comfort in connecting with people and knowing that other people have the same fears confusions and whatnot so uh, that that is that is the purpose but I do want to be positive at the same time. Uh, just for those of you who might be new here, my name's Alex. I am a mum of a two-year-old. I am a stay-at-home, work-at-home mum. I have a husband as well, and we live on the east coast of Australia. And on this channel, I usually do mum and lifestyle type videos. So I'd love to have you along to subscribe. Given the current situation, what's going on, um, I'm going to be doing more videos. I want to share things that are both sort of connecting, but also I want to share with you things that I'm doing at home with my son for entertainment. I want to share with you the types of videos that I usually do, um, like things that I'll have coming up how to start a small business from home, how to menu plan, how to keep a clean house, how to, I also do vlogs like day in the life stuff. So how to get your child to nap in a cot. Those are the types of videos I, I usually do here. The reason I'm sitting in my car right now is because I'm in the middle of doing the glucose tolerance test. For those of you who don't know, it's the test that you do when you're pregnant um, to check if you have gestational diabetes. I'm 27 weeks pregnant. Yeah, so I actually went in. Uh, things kind of felt like they erupted more on last night on the news. And I didn't even want to come in to the hospital environment to do this test today. And when I got to the front counter, I um, was baffled by the number of people walking around in the hospital, not seemingly not trying to keep distance. Um, the hospital workers, I assume they were workers, were crammed into a cafe. Um, I went into the small pathology area and I said to them, I'd like to sit in my car because you have to wait for two hours between your blood tests you have to sit still and they said no we have to watch you and I said well I'm sorry I'm not sitting in the waiting room like there were a few people in there one man was coughing I had to sign a form and I said can I please uh, do you have hand sanitizer like there was just no attempt in the hospital environment to keep distance and I'm just I'm absolutely confused and bewildered by that um, but anyway, that's why I'm sitting in my car because I told them I'll sit outside, which I did for the first hour, but I um, I wanted to make this video and I need to move my car because I'm in two hour parking. So here I am. So um, 
my last videos I was confused um, I was sort of going back and forth between thinking like wondering if there was an overreaction and or an underreaction and the thing that really changed it for me was yesterday on the news um, just seeing well, first of all seeing the number of cases in Italy hearing about how they're losing so many people hearing about how in the UK they are have like one ventilator between eight people who need it so they're having to choose who who lives and dies and um, and just knowing that Australia like when you see the number of cases and deaths in Australia it seems really low so it's easy it's sort of easy to fall into that trap of being like mm, like are we really in change like what but where Australia is now is where Italy was two weeks ago apparently so when I saw that the, the footage from the hospital it really drove it home and it was very upsetting and I had a cry last night and I know from my mother's group a lot of the girls were uh, saying the same thing it really sort of hit home yesterday and I feel like those types of reports were something that were have been missing from the news for the, the days before that in the previous few days the news here in Australia was focused on how they were going to inject a lot of money into the airlines to keep them afloat very much based on small business um, and like very actual little about what the health situation was so it was kind of it was needed it was needed for them to show that and you still have that portion of um, people who are saying it's an overreaction and that the results sorry that the effect of like closing down businesses and whatnot will be way worse than the effects of the actual virus but you look at the statistics of what's happening overseas and I just don't like you I just think that's a very cavalier attitude to have in light of that and yeah so um, that's that's sort of where my thinking shifted into going right we need to be a lot more serious about this it's been hard to know how seriously to take uh, not to take seriously to um, act because looking around the community here uh, you go to the shops to do like your essential grocery pickups and there's been people crowded into cafes and stuff and I like which ridiculous and unnecessary but sort of hasn't helped you to like it hasn't made us want to go and do the same but it hasn't that type of seeing that type of thing isn't helping the general population I think to just get on board and support each other through what we have to do and Lindsay and I were talking about this yesterday because we were trying to decide whether to send Jed to daycare today and um, basically the message that was coming through is that if you don't have to go out don't stay home and um, we don't have to send Jed to daycare for us it was it was more of a social thing and a help for me thing for when the new baby arrives um, I work from home and my little work is going to be dwindling anyway because it's wedding based so lots of people like that's kind of not happening whatever um, so yeah we're not sending Jed to daycare Lindsay's going to be working from home um, even like yesterday I met up with um, my friends and the kids were sort of hugging and playing it's hard to stop kids doing that type of thing but we were going to meet up tomorrow but as of yesterday we're not going to be doing that anymore either so that's our current situation let's talk a bit about the news yesterday saying that bars cl clubs entertainment venues 
places of social gatherings churches that type of thing in Australia are closed as of midday today um, the Prime Minister was saying that they from seeing how people were out in the community on the weekend it's clear that people weren't taking it seriously or getting the message and I 100% agree with that because as I said we saw that but what's um, just absolutely baffling me as I said today is that at the hospital where I am today people still seem to be not trying to keep that 1.5 meters distance or happy to sit in a waiting room with other people when you could just be sitting outside in the fresh open air right next to the building like what the hell we all have to do it together you know like me Lindsay and Jed are well now so I know that if we keep into a house we're not gonna get sick like you we're gonna have to go out to do little bits and pieces occasionally but it just sucks that um, like everyone needs to do their bit but the confu but what really um, confused me last night is well not confuse me but I just think there's there's lots of holes and I believe that a lot of people were feeling the same like okay so you're shutting down the so places of social gathering that that's good that is good however people are still having to go to work in jobs that aren't like the essential aren't essential so you've got um crowded public transport and we're from sydney i know how crowded <coughs> sydney uh, like city rail is but crammed into those trains like sardines and then you go into an uh, air-conditioned office where you're sitting like a meter away from your colleagues um i don't know what the current situation is with people's workplaces and them supporting working from home arrangements but i like i know from my husband for example he he has some flexible working arrangements just be, because of that we moved but his work hasn't actually yet put in place um a directive for people to work from home and like he hasn't had that directive he decided yesterday i'm just going to tell them that i'll be working from home my point is how is gathering on trains and in offices really any much it's not much different than gathering in social places like pubs and whatever because you're still in close proximity especially in public transport so there's a big hole there um and look i know that distancing in some ways is better than none at all but there is that question mark and if we are trying to stop the spread of this thing um, as efficiently and quickly as possible I just don't know if that's going to be good enough and I feel like a lot of people might be thinking the same and the other side of it is schools um, I have teacher friends and I can see like on Facebook a lot of them are kicking off that schools are still staying open and I get that too I get that they don't want to shut down education for a long time but if there are alternative options then why wouldn't you just take them I, I kind of feel like if you're not doing a more stringent um, broad approach that there's too many holes in the plan um, I want to talk now a little bit about the pregnancy factor because I know from my mother's group online sorry that a few of the mums are feeling the same way and uh, feeling uh, scared and nervous about being pregnant and not being pregnant in the way that of like getting sick necessarily although that does concern me a little bit um, it does concern me but I'm more frightened about like if if you know if things do go in a bad like a very bad way here and I'm due to give birth in a few months 
I like I had I didn't I didn't have an, an easy birth with my son it was um, it was quite traumatic for me and difficult and um, I was already nervous about it and now I'm nervous like what's gonna happen if the same thing happens sorry that was my foot on the chair nothing suspicious like what happens if there's not enough hospital beds and what if like there's no not enough anesthesiologists because they're tending to like critical care patients i didn't have an any oh, baby kicking awkwardly i didn't i had a drug drug free labor with jed and i don't want to do that again like i i don't want to do that again so i'm scared on that level <sighs> bringing a baby into the world where all this is going on anyway I know that everybody everybody has their own issues uh, going on and I will deal with this I will deal with it and it is okay but I just wanted to voice that because like I said at the beginning of the video this is about connecting with people and sharing with you how I'm feeling so that if you're feeling the same that we can have this like solidarity and know that you're not alone in how you're feeling just to take a break here and say a couple of things i'm feeling grateful for let's just do that because let's let's move to that because we can spend a long time talking about the the fears and look there's a lot of fears that go along with this um um so i'm i'm most concerned about the the health care system and that just people won't have the ability to be treated this is without a doubt the weirdest situation the weirdest thing ever it feels like we're in a movie like it feels like we're in a hollywood end of the world movie and uh it's weird it's so weird it's going to be difficult on everybody um it's very isolating. I feel for people who are by themselves. I feel for single parents, especially. I feel for elderly people. Um, I hate the thought of not seeing my parents for months, potentially. Um, so sorry if this video is really long and all over the place, but I, I think I'd like to shift gears a little bit now and talk about some um, positive things let's take time to think about every day the things that we're grateful for i'm going to give you three things that i'm grateful for today i'm feeling grateful that my husband has the ability to work from home i'm grateful that we live in an area where it's possible for us to still go and spend out time outdoors um, without having to be in close quarters with anyone and I'm grateful that um, I'm grateful that we're being forced to look inwards a little bit I feel like this is a bit of a wake-up call I feel like we're being shook and tested a bit to simplify and look inwards and let the earth have a little rest and change the way that we do things and look at our true values like have your values been tested and questioned lately because I'm feeling really grateful for my little family and my health we can use this time to spend time with our families to slow down the pace of life which can be so fast paced find some things that that you can do that that will light you up let's use this time to get some things done but also don't put too much pressure on ourselves like just relax just just relax as well give yourself permission to relax but at the same time yeah tackle some of those things um, I mentioned earlier I'm gonna do a little video on 
on how to go about starting a, a new little business um, and I've made videos on how to like organize your wardrobe and and things like that and I'm gonna do menu planning and stuff so maybe it is a good chance if we're gonna be stuck to make some lists and tackle those things that our busy lives often don't allow us time to do so we will move forward with the positives and just roll with what is happening we got to do it we just got to do it like so anyway thank you for sticking with me through this long video i really hope that um something has resonated with you or it's helped you to just connect with somebody else who might be feeling something similar to the way you're feeling um but yeah like i said i'm gonna be putting out some more content so please subscribe and hit the little notification bell which will let you know send you a notification when i put out a new video i hope you're all doing okay and feeling okay and yeah let's just um get through it together Thank you for watching. Bye.